In this video, we will do some College Board multiple choice questions pertaining to rational functions and their zeros. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.8. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Take out your TI-84 for number 20. Copy this function r of x in as y1. The rational function r is given by r of x equals this expression. For what values of x does r of x equal 0? So we are being asked to find the zeros of r. That will show up on the graph as x-intercepts. So let's graph it. To start off with a standard 10 by 10 window, let's hit zoom 6. From this distance, it looks like there will be three x-intercepts. There seems to be one here, one here, and one here. This little jag right here is probably a vertical asymptote. But um, let's zoom in a little bit more. What would be fun is zoom box. Let's check that out. Zoom box, that's zoom one. Try it. Move your pointer to the upper left-hand corner of your area of interest. So I'm going to move it to about here. And hit enter. Now move your pointer to the lower right-hand corner of your area of interest. You'll notice that as I move, it is drawing a rectangle. And when I hit enter, it will zoom in on whatever is inside the rectangle. All right, this gives me a much better view that I'm going to have a zero here, here, and here. These two are really close together. So um, there are two ways to find zeros. My least favorite way is to do second trace zero. That puts you through a left bound, right bound situation. Uh, I don't like that. So my favorite way of finding zeros is to graph the x-axis itself. So I'm gonna put zero right here and I'm gonna go back to my graph. See, that red line is the x-axis. Now I can just find the intersection between the blue and the red and those will be my zeros. So let's hit second trace, intersect, second trace five. Now we can just move the pointer close to each one of these zeros. I think I'm gonna go in order from left to right. So um, I used my up arrow to jump to the red just because I can see that that's gonna be a smooth trip from left to right. So just come over here near the first zero and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. So my first zero is at negative 2.303. So you can see we are on the right track. We can eliminate option B so far. Let's go after this middle zero now. So let's hit second, trace, intersect again. Move that pointer close to that middle zero. Whoa, I went too far. And just hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. Oh, this is exactly one. I started to say we can't eliminate anymore, but we can eliminate D because there was only one negative zero, negative 2.303. There was no negative 1.643. So we can eliminate D. In fact, to be honest, we already know that the answer is going to be C because we do see that there are three zeros. Not two, not four, but three. So we know C is gonna be the answer. Let's follow through and find the 1.303, just for fun. 
One more time. Second trace. Five. Okay, I'm moving to the red for easy travels. Okay, move over close to this guy and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. There it is, 1.303. 21, the rational function g is given by g of x is equal to all of this. For what input values of g are the output values of g equal to zero? This is just a funny way of asking for the zeros of this rational function. The zeros will be where the numerator is equal to zero. So we have some factoring to do. Looking at this first factor, there is a common factor of x. So let's start by factoring that out. So that's going to leave behind x plus three. Now for this trinomial, this will surely factor as a binomial times a binomial. x squared will factor as x times x. Five will only factor as one times five. Inner plus outer must equal the middle. To get a negative four, I'm going to need a positive one x and a negative five x. So I have factored it. So I carelessly said that the zeros of this function will be where the numerator is equal to zero. And that's usually true, but I have to be a little bit more careful than that. So if I went by just that, um, this is too big. If I went by only that, then I would say um, g of x is equal to zero at x equals zero and x equals negative three and x equals negative one. and x equals positive five. But there's a problem with one of these. Does anybody see the issue? Well, the key is the fact that one of these factors appears in the numerator and the denominator. This x plus three here shows up in both places. This is no good in terms of um, the zeros of this function because um, g of x is undefined at x equals negative three because that would cause a zero in the denominator. It would cause a zero in the numerator and the denominator, but that's still undefined. So um, this one has to be thrown out. So this will not be included among the zeros. So it will just be negative one, zero, and five. So the answer is B. Last one, number 22. The rational function R is given by R of X equals this expression. On what intervals of X is R of X greater than or equal to zero? All right, this is just like the many problems that we did up here. But first we have some factoring to do. Every term in the numerator has an X in it. So let's start by factoring out the x. So that's going to leave behind x squared plus 4x plus 4. Over x squared minus 9. And we are looking for where r of x is greater than or equal to 0. This will factor further. This trinomial will surely factor as a binomial times a binomial. Greater than or equal to zero. X squared will factor as X times X. Four will factor as two times two or one times four, but an inner, the inner plus the outer must equal the middle. So two X and two X make four X. So we factored it. Also, the denominator will factor. This is the difference of two squares. So x plus three times x minus three. Now that I look at it, 
I see that the x plus 2 appears twice. So let's write this as x plus 2 quantity squared. Like this. Where will f of x equal 0? That's going to be where the numerator is equal to 0. So that's going to be at x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. Where will f of x be undefined? That's going to be at x equals negative 3. And if I can squeeze it in here, x equals positive 3. I should have said r of x here, not f of x. And put r of x right here as well. We will need four rows because we have four separate factors. We need a row for x, a row for x plus 2 squared, a row for x plus 3, and a row for x minus 3. Put these critical values. Oh, whoops, I'm missing one. Am I not? Let's see if I can squeeze it on here. Put your four critical values across the top in order from least to greatest. So we're going to start with this negative 3, and then we have negative 2, and then 0, and then positive 3. The x will obviously be negative to the left of 0 and positive to the right. x plus 2 squared will be positive in every interval because when you square even a negative number, it becomes positive. x plus 3 gave us the 0 of negative 3. This factor is negative to the left and positive to the right. x minus 3 gave us a factor, a 0, of positive 3. It will be negative to the left and positive to the right. We have an odd number of negatives in the first interval, so r of x will be negative here. Even number of negatives, r of x is positive here. r of x is also positive here, negative here, and positive here. We are looking for the intervals where r of x is greater than or equal to 0. So the solutions will be where r of x is positive. Okay, that's going to be in these intervals. Um, but also where it is equal to 0. So that's going to include this negative 2, which is right in the middle of two other intervals. Because of that, this will just be one fat interval um, because of the or equal to. We also want to include the 0 endpoint. So I'm going to show that with a bracket right now. We will not include the negative 3 or the 3 because uh, r of x is undefined at those values. So I'm going to leave that as parentheses. So in interval notation, we have two intervals. We have an interval from negative 3 to 0. Okay, parenthesis bracket union, and then we have another interval from 3 to infinity. This will be slightly tricky because this is multiple choice and they did not give us the answers in interval notation. But let's see if we can match it up. So um, negative 3 to 0, that's right here. We see the less than, that's parentheses, and you see the or equal to on the 0, that's the bracket. So this is matching up great. And the inequality x is greater than 3 matches the interval from 3 to infinity. So the answer is D. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. Or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.